Well, it's been almost four days since an Aurora couple was last seen, and now their family is speaking to Local 4 News in hopes someone will come forward with information. Local 4's Casey Main sat down with them today and joins us now in studio with how they are searching for their loved ones. Casey? Danielle, Robert and Levada Proctor were last seen this past Thursday, and their son, sons and their families, along with several others, are searching tonight for the couple. And they're also asking for the help of you at home to keep an eye out for the couple and their car. Robert and Levita Proctor went to Grand Island in January. They apparently got lost, trying to get back home to Aurora. That was almost six weeks ago. The couple were seen on camera at a pump and pantry gas station along Highway 6 in Hastings on January 12th at 1.02 a.m., a decent way southwest of home, Aurora, and heading the wrong way. And more learned since then. The two stopped at a Cenex, maybe an Anytime Fitness, then it's likely their car seen on video at a roundabout near Adams Central Schools. That at 1.39 a.m., still heading west towards Minden. The family is still hopeful they can be found alive. These calls. We love you. Everybody in this town, this county, everybody really loves you. We're going to step back in just a few moments to the morning on where it started as we met up with the family on our search for Robert and Levita. They're driving a Chrysler Pacifica 2007 license plate 1030. Uh, it has a CB uh, logo on it. A, a veteran plate. A veteran. A, a veteran plate. License yeah, plate. a veteran license plate. He was a veteran for 21 years. He was a, a a CB. He served in Korea and he served in Vietnam. And Levada and he, and he were married at 25 and 27 years old. Levada being the 27 year old and Robert being the 25 year old. And this is 1958. They got married. Yes, so they have been married for, we did the math on it, 64, 65 years they've been married. So, I mean, they've, they know each other like, you know, th this is a tight couple. It is a tight couple and, and they did everything together. Um, they, they never fought, not once. They never fought in front of their kids. The one time that they fought, uh, the, the son said, he got out of the car and she said, he'll find his way home. Okay, that was the one time he ever saw them fight. They were just a very loving couple. They took, did great, you know, great job taking care of their kids and, and they're just wonderful grandparents too. On the date of, that they went missing, uh, Robert was having some medical issues. He uh, had been admitted to the hospital at Veterans by his doctor and then was actually uh, put in the ambulance and brought to St. Francis Hospital in Great Isle, uh, Nebraska. Levada has issues with her eyesight at night and uh, Robert is, is suffering from uh, dementia, as well as, you know, he's a, was a pretty good size, heavy duty smoker. So he's got a, a few issues at the time. He was actually gray in the face the day that he w uh, went missing. He, he, when he was admitted to the hospital, low heart rate um, and having some medical issues at the time. And she was actually very confused. She tried to get from the Veterans Hospital to the St. Francis Hospital and actually got lost in her own hometown which she in essence lived in for 92 years. So, you know, hard to do. Um, and so she was having some medical issues of some sort. Um, the family doesn't know what was going on, but she was very confused on, with everything that was going on, very elated with regard to not being able to even find her car in the parking lot, in the handicapped parking space. So those are the things that, you know, start to really make us think about what was going on. But they traveled for eight hours in a circle. You know, just kept going to the right, in essence, going southwest and kept going southwest, never getting to northeast to Aurora, which was only 20 minutes down the road from from the hospital. So, I mean, that it, it just, it, you know, it, it breaks your heart to think about someone struggling for eight hours in a 10 mile radius yep. to try to get home. You know, and with us thinking about that and, you know, what if they are our grandparents? And that's why we are here. We have never really stepped into an area where we said, all right, we're going to dedicate a full seven days to the search and push everything else to the side because this is such a fresh case. The family needs answers and we want to bring you into the rest of the story right now as we meet up with the family and we start to let the day just unfold before your eyes and how we ended up here at the Platte River by the end of the day and where we're going to be heading tomorrow as well and why. So this is one episode you are not going to want to miss.
um, any conversation before we ever get started with any family members. I want you to know that, you know, first and foremost, we're here for you and your family. This is how I pay the bills and this is how we're able to come do it for you, but we're here to respect you and your family first and foremost. So if there's anything throughout the day, you're like 100% Jared, we should cut that, make sure it's not in there. Let me know and we're going to do so for you. Um, so our process today, the way that we're going to come in and tackle this is, you know, Bill's been working with you and a lot of, you know, coming up with the CCTV camera information has been great because as we come into this, especially with dementia patients or anybody, you know, we have to start building a profile. You know, where did they live? Well, they lived up in Aurora. Where were, you know, where did she pick them up? You know, she picked them up in Grand Isle at the hospital, but then where was she last seen? And so now we have the, you know, the flagpole incident where she backs into the flagpole. We have the, uh, you know, just down the road, the, the school at the roundabout was yeah. the very last location. And so that gives us a new ground zero that here we are 37 minutes away from their home. But as Bill starts working and building this map, it appears as though she keeps making these turns yeah. and getting further and further away from home. Yeah. What can you do to you know bring us and the viewers into the story a little bit more as to you know your, your grandma and your grandpa and kind of where you feel like we're at on this one? Um, I don't know. I guess just the dementia thing, like you mentioned, is a huge concern. I just don't like. I know my grandpa got out majority of the time to ask for directions so him relaying that information to my grandma I think there's definitely issues there she he's not going to remember that and then um, my grandma just with her glaucoma not being able to see at night and it's mainly like the turns that she can't see she's actually told my mom before that it's not so much the lights that bother her but she just cannot actually see the turn so that's concerning. Um, like you said, she very well could have just not been able to see that the road's ending and very well could have just went into the water. And, and so my understanding also with your grandma is that she would drive 45 on the interstate. Oh yeah. So, and, and she never went on any dirt roads. Yeah, <laughs> So, correct, so correct. Six, six weeks ago, we didn't have snow in the area as far as I understand. So she could clearly see whether it was a yeah. dirt road or a paved yeah, road. Yeah. And so then when we start looking at the past cases that we worked on, you know, for those that have had dementia, for those that have woken up at two in the, you know, two in the morning and they went for a drive thinking it was seven or eight, eight a.m. already. Yeah. Um, or those that, you know, end up in a location like this, first location we're choosing at the lake here, is that they come in, it's paved, they realize that the road ends and they, you know, they end up going forward still instead of reverse. For some reason, right. dementia right. patients are drawn to water. Yeah. And so with this one having two boat ramps at this location, we're really gonna be focused on the two boat ramps, but then also right. the shoreline that goes along here as well. And so I think, you know, to make the best use of our day, one is we're dealing with um, a new scenario for us. You know, we haven't gotten into location as to where everything is now frozen. Yeah. So normally we, you know, normally we pull the boat out we do our sonar and we're just hitting, you know, locations sure. just, you know, normally would knock out 10, 12 in a day, easy. Yeah. Uh, today, we're going to look at doing it a little bit different as far as two different options. One is we have the 360 sonar that we can auger some holes, drop the 360 in there, and then we can identify within a hundred mile or a hundred foot radius if we have any targets there. But we also have a magnetometer as well that I think we're going to rig that up first that we can put in an inflatable boat and we can just simply drag it along. Okay. What that's going to do is it's going to give us a reading if there happens to be a large metal object under there like a car. Um, a refrigerator or you know a set of tires with you know steel tires are going to give us a much different reading than okay. a large car. So we'll be able to identify hey we need to really focus on this area at which point then the auger and the, and the 360 would be a good option for us. Oh, that's solid. It's, it's 23 feet at one point in here, whether it be, what it looks like on topography is it comes to here and then drops off right here. So they'd have to get to about here. And so if a car comes in here, I mean, we're only, you know, 50 feet from the boat ramp. Yeah. And so if the car is in here, in my opinion, the car's gonna come in, it's gonna float. And I would put the car anywhere from here to another 20 feet that direction. Now this right here is a magnetometer. 
what it does is it reads the magnetic pull of the Earth's gravity or magnetism. I don't know, some of this stuff is over my head. What I do know is that we've used it in the past and it will pick up large metal objects. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it inside of the boat and then we have a monitor screen that we're then able to read and tune for the magnetic field within this area. Usually boat ramps here, anywhere that's concrete, we're gonna have rebar in here. So we wanna make sure that we do not tune it tune. Near, near the boat ramp. So we'll come out here about 30 feet. We'll do our tuning there based upon where you're gonna be walking and where I'll be at behind it. And then that way, when we tune it, it will sense where we're at and then we'll pick up any larger metal objects from there. We are ready to go. When we hear a beep, we uh, will definitely want to check on that. light up. So we have the ice auger here. Why don't you get the 360 ready? I, I can pull on the boat and I'll get them on working on give us a hole. Or just to tell them and I'll just keep doing this. And uh, get a hole, where it can make a couple marks on it where you want it. So I'll get the uh, 360 together and ready. Yeah, so right, yeah, I, I, kind of where I skidded it, um, kind of where the snow is piled up there. So we'll do one there, and then about 50 feet over, off over there, we'll do another one 50 feet. Same angle on the other side. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Jared. Good to meet you, Jared. I'm Thank Victor. You. Victor, pleasure to meet you. I'm going to get the uh, 360 ready, and that's what we're going to drop into these holes. Okay. These are 360, so we can just identify, um, and it will kick out about 150 feet, 75 feet around. Okay. And that'll tell us if we have an object that we've missed on that by chance. Okay. Bump over to 360, confirm. Range, we'll keep range at 75. Yeah, and so because it is so shallow, we're only getting about 30, a good reading about 30 feet out. So we'll pull that up and out. We'll move over to that hole. Let's go check that one more hole over there. All right, let's go check that last one over there. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any shadows that would represent a nice big blocky car, yeah. And the car would be roughly the length between these grid lines here. And so we have nothing in the way of a car. So right now, I'm feeling fairly confident in this area being clear, especially running the magnetometer over it, the depth that we're at, as well as running the sonar on it. So for now, we're going to shut this off. We'll pack this one up. We'll see what uh, Bill has going on, and then we'll probably have the guys plunk some holes at that other boat ramp to uh, double check some depth over there as well. Yeah, nothing out there.
Alright, yeah, I'm clear to the boat ramp between here and there. We'll just keep on with the um, magnetometer then. I really wish we had the uh, not a frozen lake so we could definitely scan it a lot better and really clear it. When we're in the boat, we're able to go 75 feet to our, the right, 75 feet to the left, so we're really covering like 120 to 150 feet. With that, we really have to tighten up our patterns to 10 to 15 feet to make sure that we're not missing anything because it does not casting as far wide. It's going more deep than it is wide on it. So it'll take a little bit longer, but we'll make it work. We'll probably be here another hour or two just uh, running that back and forth. So I'll get this over to the trailer and then come give Bill a break and do a little pulling myself for him. Nothing there that Magnetomer picked up. I'd like to have a much better reading by using the boat. So we kind of go like from the importance of sonar equipment that we like to use. One is we like to use side scan imaging first because that allows us to cover a lot more territory with more accuracy to identify, all right, we're casting 75 feet to the left, 75 feet to the right. We get depth readings, temperature readings, side scan readings, great shadows to where then my second preference is then to move over the top of it to get down imaging and side imaging. We then jump over to what's my next best scenario and option. You know, we have the magnetometer that we've been using with this one. As we spoke about earlier, it allows me to pick up large metal objects. However, my swath patterns that I have to cover are going to be a lot tighter because it's really casting in a downward for me versus an outward, um, just the way the centers are on it. So therefore, rather than being able to go 35 feet out from shore and then go another 75 feet, and I've really covered 150 feet, I'm covering a lot tighter grids on this one of you know 10, 15, 20 feet and having to do a lot more and really focusing on where I would expect a vehicle to be. Now, you also saw us drop the 360 sonar in as well, going with what's the most probable locations if a car was going to be in here. And that's where we had them auger those holes. We dropped the 360 in. We saw that it was really shallow. And so because it was is as shallow as it is, you know, it doesn't necessarily rule this out, but it makes it a lot less likely that their vehicle would be in here. With that being said, though, we jump over to a case like we had down in Lakeland, Florida with a Margaret uh, Shoup. And with that one, you know, she, her car was only six inches below the surface in, you know, six and a half feet of water. So this five, six feet is not necessarily out of the question when we're looking for a vehicle. Less likely, but not out of the question. Um, can I say that this lake is 100% ruled out and checked off? Absolutely not. If we don't find them in the next couple of days that we're here, there's not much more that we can do on this trip, but it's gonna be one of these locations. And I'm sure that we're gonna have multiple locations in the next couple of days where it's like, ugh, I cannot say with 100% certainty, Victor, I can tell you with 100% certainty that your parents are not in here. Right now, I can't do that. Um, but we're gonna continue down our list of what's the most logical and probable locations. In fact, we really haven't jumped into a mapping system and showed you that yet. So uh, I'm gonna put the boat away and I'm gonna jump onto the computer and show you all that right now. All right, so let's quickly break this down before we meet back up with the family at the uh, pond that Victor just got permission for us on. Okay. Coming into Grand Island is where the hospital is at that she picked him up. She went to actually from the, vet the Veterans Hospital. Mm -hmm. She got lost on the way from the Veterans Hospital to get over to St. Francis. Okay. And then picked him up at St. Francis because he said he wouldn't take any advice from the doctor unless his wife was there. And when his wife got there, he decided that he was a little bit irate and made the decision at that point in time that he wanted to get out of the hospital. Uh, even though he was gray and he was uh, parched and he was having some issues, uh, they let him out and he got in the car with her at around 4.35 o'clock at the night. Okay. And then from there, the, their intention was go from St. Francis to home in Aurora. Yeah. So this is where we would have had two five mile radiuses around Grand Island where we knew that they were last as well as what their potential home destination was. But then as we now start to break this down, 
we know that they never made it home, but around that there was two location sightings here at this intersection here. Exactly. So they think that because she was taking 34 that she missed 34. So if you look back at it to the left. So 34, so 34 up 34 comes straight down. It also comes straight across. So it goes through into Aurora, but she took straight down and then cut across. Okay. And so she got lost. And she got lost just getting to St. Francis. She, she went left at a car wash versus right at a car wash. And so she keeps making the, the wrong turn. And that was at four o'clock. So she got lost at four in the afternoon and picked Robert up at six o'clock. Somewhere in that range, yeah. And so at that point, she's now driving home to Aurora and she gets to... Giltner. So she gets to Giltner and she goes into a subdivision. Um, right up here. Right up there. And she's deep in the subdivision and she actually gets out of the vehicle, according to Victor, and walks into the house and knocks on the door and gets directions at that point in time. Okay, so she asked for directions from there, and then she's seen at the intersection over here also, right? She's seen at the intersection uh, going through at that intersection by someone passing by. Okay. And then she goes down the road on, I believe it's six, and she goes into a, a farmhouse, and he gets out of the car and rings the doorbell, um, and uh, the person, he, he walks back to the car, and she's about to drive away and he, the man gives him directions to her and he's eating a sandwich and that's where this is in and so they and, and they, this is where they banged into the flagpole at that's exactly at that location that location okay and, and so now they've they've gone close to aurora but they're starting to make the the azimuth turn you know clockwise but and, and this also she's now crossed over 80s normally she would not cross over 80 so she's already moved south of 80 so now does she keep bumping into 80 and now she thinks that she's gone the wrong direction? I think she's, she's trying to get back to 34, back to 34, and then she goes 34 the wrong direction because she doesn't, it doesn't, as we saw last night at 1.40 in the morning, the sign says 6, 34. It doesn't say north, south, east, or west. It just says 6 and 34. So she's now on 6 and going through Hastings and stops again he gets out of the vehicle she parks a ways away from the because she just got in an accident at the last location so she's at pump and pantry she pulls in with like 25 feet from the uh the curb stops so that she can make the turn so she doesn't have to back up again so so, so let me let me just show that then so we have coming out we have the 34 and 6 coming out of grand island yep. and then we also have it going into aurora Exactly. of 34 and so in her mind 34 34 if I just stay on 34 I'm gonna make my way home not realizing that she ended up on 34 south and, and, and we don't know if she came through the farm fields but at that time now it's 10 30 at night so somehow she six o'clock four and a half hours to get to Giltner and then 1039 she's at the second location and then she's now we don't know if she went through the farm fields to get there but at that point in time it was 28 mile an hour to 30 mile an hour winds so I would assume that she stopped somewhere to just not being able to deal with the weather that was going on around her and then decided to move again somewhere around 1230 quarter one because at 102 she's at the pump and pantry and then so from the 102 now they end up over here at the Senex, where they now spend 20 minutes using the bathroom getting cokes hanging out at this gas station and then they get back in the car and head again the wrong direction uh six west now they're heading west which is also six and 34 west yeah so in her mind she's still on the right road if i just stay on 34 i'm going home but she's south and she's west rather than being north and heading east exactly and so she makes a right and continues down this road so now at 1 50 a.m is when she ends up at this intersection here and that sign i believe is the one that has it actually has a camera on it that lights up the intersection and there's a there's a camera right there at that sign but that's the last location that they have the vehicle so far at this point 30 and she's heading and she's heading west heading west from this location and, and as you know we went right here right before that pond that we are going to look at there is a sign that says 634 and it has zero, no west on it it has nothing it doesn't say east west or, or north or south okay and then victor ended up over here so this one here if we zoom into it and we look at it both on google as well as on this one it's a dirt road. We know that she doesn't like dirt roads. You zoom in on it, you also have too much foliage, too far across. You're not getting her car across there, in my opinion. But, but she's asking for directions. 
Right. So again, she's going the wrong direction. Possibly she gets through that intersection. She's never recognized it before. There's that's the next location she she can get into. And that if she's only going forward and not backing up, that she, if she tried to turn around, uh, the owner, according to Victor, says that the front the road frontage is actually deep. Yeah. I mean they're having medical emergencies. It seems uh, she's having uh, you know awareness issues with regard to. Uh, the sides of the road. She's having awareness issues with what's behind her, um, and at the same time, she's lost. Hey, yeah, it's and now, 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 really now it's almost two in the morning. Yeah. So what we do is we now have a new, you know, central epicenter of our five-mile radius away from the hospital to the north, away from home. This is our very last location. So now we want to take a look at our five-mile radius, and ten mile and fifteen. What do we have to work with within this? So right now we are up here at this lake here in town working on the theory of she kept making these right hand turns and so as we drove through at 1 30 in the morning and if you think about it they've only made it 37 miles yeah in eight hours yeah from so the 15 mile radius is actually you know might even be too much because if it's two two o'clock in the morning when this occurred right so i think it's more closer to that inner circle yeah and, and so if we stick with this idea of where we're currently at and why we started at this location is we came from the all right she was heading west let's say that she kept making a right and let's say that she came up through juanita we put eyes on this which is where victor's at right now we'll head there next we put eyes on this one which had a locked gate so i'm and it's like a uh, Oh, or a retention pond. And so then we go with the idea that she would make another right and she ends up down here, that she sees 34 again. Now she's realized that, okay, she needs to go north and somehow she ends up up here. And that's why we're at this lake that we just got done checking. Exactly. So we checked boat ramp, boat ramp. Because it is the only blacktop road. Correct. You know? And so if she took a right, took a right, she's here. And it's surprising I mean, that Senex didn't have her on camera, but they also, by the time that they got requested that camera footage it's been so long that it's been erased right so that's the hard thing about this is that we're you're not we don't get enough information or we're not going to get enough information because of the fact that things are being erased you know every seven days or 10 days when there's no occurrence in a, in a location right that's so nice. even though we don't have the 20 minutes of them being there we know that they were there and then they were picked up at the roundabout exactly seven minutes later so i mean yet could they keep going on 34 yes you know uh, 34 and 6 it, to, could, to the west to the west yeah it could keep going that way and, and but it becomes really dark and so i would think that she'd either find the next blacktop road and take that right hand turn um according to the neighbor that has that pond that we're going to he says that two miles south of there there's also a very large body of water that we should check okay to the south of here the south of there okay yeah, because I mean, we broke yeah, this one I down and that's probably that, that 32 mile pond. Yeah, and, and when we looked at the actual aerial of it, it was no, no easy access for, she doesn't leave black, blacktop. And if she does, she's not going that far on a dirt road. Well, so, we, but we really don't know what she's doing at this point. You know, it's now two o'clock in the morning. Right. And, and you know, it, it, I don't think it's out of, the, out of the parameters that she could have gone there, especially if, I don't know what this road is here, if it's blacktop or if it's... When this is just south of the roundabout so that she that, was at. That could be a blacktop road. Right. Okay, so let's, you know. let's meet up with, with Victor. Let's then jump back over here to this. It's not likely, but let's definitely put eyes on it and check okay. that one off. And then let's jump down to the dam right here. Yep. And then we'll come up with a new game plan from there and where we want to go. The Senex is up here on the right. This is where they actually uh, were at for 20 minutes uh, and actually used the bathroom, uh, grabbed two soda pops, hung out for a little while, and then kept going on 6 and 34. And as you see, the sign doesn't say east. It, you know, it says it up there on that one, but some of them don't say it. Like this one says west. But maybe in the dark, she doesn't see that at all, no matter what. So. She kept going this way towards the roundabout, and uh, up on the right-hand side is the Adams Central School, and the, the sign actually has a video camera on it, uh, and it's a, a very lit sign, so it actually uh, lights up the entire rotary, and so they were able to pick up the vehicle. They didn't specifically identify it, but they said it was the right timing, and it looked like this, the right uh, shape of the vehicle that went through the rotary. 
All right, so here's the high school with the roundabout. And you said the camera's on yeah, they, the well, sign right here? the camera's on the sign. It also could be on the corner of that building. We see up on that. Oh, I, I see the camera over there. Yeah. See it on the corner of the building? Yep, I see it. And so then right here, west, the very last sighting of them. And so, and it becomes darkness. I mean, this is the one dark section here all the way to the next town. So if you look right here, there's that house right here. Does she realize that she's already gone the wrong direction? She takes the first right to go ask somebody else. And turn around. She in. turns around, she ends up in their pond. Possibility, it's not out of the question. Well, the neighbors said that it was deeper on this side, right? Yeah. I would take this one off the list. Uh, they can't get there, but let's let's at least look at the um, see if there's any tire marks at all, just to double just to double check it. Yeah. yeah, I think that traversing that on that side is too far and too shallow. Plus, you see the uh, tree hanging out in there. Yeah, I, I think that one's too shallow. Well, yeah, well, it, we think it is too shallow, and I walk down there, and it's all dry cracked, like probably an inch down yeah. to where you would have seen a path in the last month. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and they said it was deeper on this side, but the farmer up the road that bought this property from the guy that owns its grandparents said it's maybe three foot deep at most. He's came down here with his dogs, German Shepherds, and let them in it, and they, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can see that. Like you said, it's dry cracked, and you would have seen and you know any foliage on that side would still be smashed yeah, down yeah yeah so especially now, there yeah. was tire tracks down through there but it was between the road and there to where it looked like someone maybe drove down in and then drove out okay and it looked like it was in the past but it looked like they turned got back up on the roadway right so someone might have drove down there pulled off the side and then pulled out could have been them letting their dogs come down here or something i don't know but Okay, let's do this then, um, just to the southeast from here then. Prairie they Lake. said from that last corner back, you turn this way and go two miles and there's a... Prairie a, Lake? Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah. he actually said, I believe something like there's a T right at the water, where I was thinking, okay, that's something you kind of said something about where you could drive straight through and see the water and think that it's road, you know? Yep. You said Prairie Lake? Prairie Lake is straight down from that intersection where we are right now. From where we're at? From where we're at, straight down, and it, and it, it goes along the road. Right. But I don't know how. On the north side. Yeah. On, on Prairie Lake Road. Okay. Yeah, let's go put eyes on it and check that out. So we're going to go straight south from here. Okay. And then we'll loop and around to the other one, the Husky. Yeah. can't imagine how long she could have kept driving for. You know, I mean, you've been out there for for eight hours now. How much longer could she have gone without, at, like, literally asking for help if she if if that was the case? There it is. There. That's a that's a cliff. Yeah, that's she's not making it. That's dry. You're not making it up that over that. Rocks and bottom. Yeah. All right, so let's head back to uh, Rusk then. D does she recognize something at one point and say, oh, I know where I'm, I'm at finally. I mean, he's from, from 30 miles, he, originally he was born in Oak, Nebraska, which is 30 miles that way. So if she was born in Grand Isle, she, she sh pretty much should know where she is. I mean, she was born there and been there for 92 years in this area. Uh, they said they never left you know the area she was always close to aurora close to grand isle you know do we look closer to home maybe when we clear this we start working our way towards home and and make that the epicenter and see what the closest bodies of water are to getting home where she's tired at that point and she's gone on interstate 80 and she's gone down the road to aurora and she now gets she's now four o'clock in the morning and it, you know, it's closer to, to where they live, where she just, you know, falls asleep. 
So on the north side of this lake that we're going to, there's a potential access point. Looking at Google, I think it was too far off. Even this, I'm having a hard time yeah. accepting this one now at this point. She's, to get, she's gone into a subdivision like this to get directions before. Yeah. So she's in here, ends up getting lost, looking for lights, two o'clock in the morning, anybody awake? I don't want to bother anybody. It looks a little deeper, ice fishing. Yeah, this is the south side. But you can't get there. No, no, yeah, you can't get through there. See, on the map, it looked like that road went through. That's what I was hopeful of, is going through here. And then her ended up off into the water right here, is what I was thinking. Too far to get there, and it's also pretty low. Yeah. I mean, that, that section's actually yep. not frozen anymore either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this right here, thinking that was the road, was my thought, so. We're gonna check north side of this. I think it'll be too shallow because this is the dam side. Okay. Um, and originally on the aerial, it looked like this road went through, so we were looking at the accident off of here. We didn't know that it was gonna be blocked off. Okay. So yeah, we'll check north side and then we'll open up a computer and decide which one to uh, go hit next after that. side of it. Yeah, there's just too shallow. Too shallow on that. Yep. All right. Can I use your hood? Okay. Yeah. So we do have this one that we want to jump back to, which is, let me jump over here to the uh, street view on it. It's the first house after the after the intersection for yes, the roundabout. The yellow house, okay. right yep. there. Yeah, yeah. Got Just in trees. case they went to get directions and they turned around, yeah. and that's down the hill. But there's trees in the way. But yeah, you, you never know. Like yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that looks tired. pretty deep too. Yeah. yeah. So let's yeah. head. So I want to head there next, but let's talk about the additional game plan of what we have going on. So we'll come back here to just west of the intersection where they, they were last seen. Did she then make the next first right? She needed to get directions at this point because she'd never yeah. seen a, a roundabout before. Yeah. And so the only other, after the yellow house, the only other thing within this five mile radius that we're interested in, and I'm not that sold on it, but we have the other little uh, Hart, Hartwell Park. The reason why we're interested in it is because- And on that one would be easy to get into. I believe I've been around that and it, there are so many roads and easy ways to get into that. I believe yeah, I've been around that agree. quite a few times and there might be a lot of place where you could get in there. Yeah, especially on this side here. And, and my understanding is you had a news report also of a vehicle going into Mul this Multiple one. vehicles have gone into that pond and there's accidents been recorded yeah, in the I, news. I believe it. Okay. Yep. So I would say let's focus on those two locations next. After that, my next one I really want to check is going to be this one. I think that's going to take us to the end of the day, and that's going to be at the uh, Mormon Recreation Area. You okay. have you have two boat ramps here. You have the one on the east side. That one looked too shallow when you look at the uh, aerial maps. I'll bring that up. Just in case they figured out how to get to 34, they yeah. went the back way on 12th Street and took thir got to 34 and went north all the way back to Grand Isle in essence to get on 80, but decided to stop at the truck stop bathroom break yeah. again, whatever it may be. And from Junietta going that direction, uh, a mile before you get to the interstate, there's like a turnoff. There's a bunch of big trees along there, and then there's a, a road that turns in there, and there's a big, a good sized lake there too. Yesterday, I kind of drove around there and looked. This one it here? Was, yeah, that, that one right there. Okay. There's a pull-in right, right about here. Trees are kind of heavy, you can't see it too well. So then let's uh, game plan this for the rest of the afternoon then. Yellow House, downtown at Hartwell. Let's go hit this one north of Junietta, and then we'll hit the state park. Sounds good. Okay. All right. And I just don't think you're getting I, in there. We're not putting a boat on there. We're going to come go right through. Yeah. I see over in that corner, it's not as, uh, it's kind of open to the road a little bit. 
Okay. You know, to get through this mud, down the embankment, they'd have to come through here. They'd leave a bunch of parts in order to get through here to get into there. There's no, there's no tire marks again. There's nothing coming from that end either. Uh, it would be very difficult to get in here. After you cross the tracks, there's a Junietta feedlot and it is huge. It's one of the biggest in Nebraska. And I did stop and talk to the owner there and have them check cameras, but they were already outdated. She said they only go two weeks back. Yeah. But I'm sure they've got uh, no, and no gates, nothing. I, I'm not for sure. Got it. The state yards, that's where the state patrol get their fuel at. Okay. So they got cameras there that showed when my mom and dad leave and come back. That's how they knew that my wife got there at 2.30, was there till 3, and then they left at 4.30 to, or whatever time they to left for. Yeah, and they went to Aurora Co-op gas station, which my mom goes inside and says, someone come out and pump my gas. And they'll come out and they'll pump her gas. They've all known them for their whole lives. They've known my mom and dad, and my mom always gets her fuel there. Okay. So a person walked out, talked with them, filled their vehicle, and then they left. And then, of course, they went to Grand Island and wound up at the VA. Um, so as much as I would like to do Hartwell first and then go north of Junietta, how about if we go hit that one first since the business is still open? Let's at least go put eyes on it and yeah. see. And we can always go back through Hartwell doing 12, yeah. 12th Street like yeah. we did last night. Okay, yeah, let's do that then. This is what I was mentioning last night too. Does she then see a sign for 80 and does she t take that, which is where Victor's taking us? Yeah, exactly. You're gonna hit that first ditch here and bury it so you're not in there, plus it's shallow. You got another one on 42nd Street. So uh, let's head back down to 42nd here. Let's just put eyes on if there's a fence or anything here, just uh, south and east. And then let's make our way up to the pond up here and then we'll head back to Hartwell from there. You're not going down through the middle of the feedlots there? No. Nope. All right, so then let's go to Hart Hartwell then. So here is the heart well. I don't, I don't see him coming in here. I'm just not feeling this. Kind of going right now off the theory of did she come back around through uh, Janita back on 12th and then realize that, all right, 34, I now know where I'm at. I need to head north again. And I'm trying to remember exactly when that happened. Uh, six weeks ago. So yeah, it would have been all ice at that time. All right, and then uh, yeah, we'll just keep making our way north on 34 and then you know, they were in Aurora, so we'll take uh, 34 and six to the uh, East, and, but we're we're also playing with the theory of you know it, it appears though if you come from Aurora you know kind of kept making right hand turns until their last location that they were seeing down there and so what if she's now on 34 and six and she just continues on she says in her mind all right I'm on I finally made it to 34 she knows that she's 20 minutes from home thinking that Hastings might be Grand Isle <clears throat> and now she's heading west instead of east. Well, and now she drives another 20 minutes down the road that direction towards anything's the... Anything's possible. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I don't know the whole history 
uh, of the couple either um, on that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know involved? Yeah, dementia for him. Uh, they've been trying to get him into the VA for yeah. two weeks now, uh, but there's a two-year waiting. And then she got lost to go pick him up that night also at the hospital uh -huh. around six o'clock. And then they'd been driving until 1.40 in the morning when they, were, when they were last seen. So eight hours of being lost, and they've only made it 37 miles. Sure. Well, my mom was born in Grand Island, and she, the VA, my mom and dad have been there a thousand times. And St. Francis, they're really close. Yeah. For my mom to turn at five points and go west is totally the wrong direction. And that's what she did. And then got down to the tracks where it's a dead end or they turned right on Vine Street. And then someone on Vine Street either had them follow them to St. Francis and went in and let them know that my mom was lost or they gave her directions there. But they know that my mom got lost between the VA and St. Francis. And my dad was saying, I, I, you're not doing nothing to, to me till my wife gets here. So I don't know the time period of how long my dad was there before my mom got there. But she also couldn't find her vehicle in the parking lot. And she was parked in the handicap right up beside the building. Okay. So, so she you, was, you were thinking your mom was dead confused also. Yes, yeah. And I actually talked to a couple of friends of mine, Kenny and, and Tyler Vettel, who are doctors. They said my mom might have had a, a UTI yep. that could have made her and lose know, her sense of direction. I know that is, so. Yeah. yeah. So, so he believes that the, because uh, he was checking out ice fishing at that time. So how much the water in the area was, because you know the night, like, you know, the back of your hand at this point, how much the water in the area was actually frozen versus what was open at the time, do you it know? It was pretty nice before we had that storm to where I don't know if it would have been thick enough ice to where it couldn't have been drove into and broke and went under, or I just don't know how much ice was on at that time. Yeah, I would have to look back at my reports it's, when I, you know, because I, you know, I check the reports on how many ice fishermen I check on a certain day and stuff like that. Would, would you do me a favor and double check those? And can you give me a call or? Sure. So then, Victor, I, I, I noticed that you know, even as cold as it is over here at the Phillips, there's the parking lot right there. I think we need one identify. Is that a 24-hour gas station, or was it closed at that time? Um, did they pull in there by chance, and did they end up right off the bank right there by chance? So. Are you talking about the Phillips, Ed? just right over here? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So we'll head over there next. All right, we'll follow so. you. Yep. Sounds All right. Good. Sounds good. Thanks, sir. Yep. Yep. Have a good day. Appreciate your yeah. time. Thank you. Yeah. So he's checking ice fishing permits prior to the two of them going missing. So how does that now change our thought process and where we're looking and how we're looking? Ice fishing permits. Yeah. What do you mean he's checking ice fishing permits? Well, he's a game warden, law enforcement. Oh, he is? Yeah, the one we were just talking to. Yeah. So that's why he knew. So when he took down the date, he said, no, he goes, I started checking January 3rd for people that were ice fishing in the area for violations. So that meant that, and that's why he told us that the two lakes here were already frozen over. And he said that they were made aware of them missing, so then they were checking for broken ice as well in the area. So there, it was all frozen on February 12th? It was uh, January 12th. January 12th, sorry. Yep. So then right now, the only thing that we've identified that was not frozen is this one over here at the river at, the, at this moment in time. Where or each location on the Platte River, that puts us on literally driving the Platte River, like from Kearney all the way back here and trying to find a location on the river that is actually on January 12th was not frozen because that seems to be the only thing that wasn't frozen. And, and they and they seem to always be stopping at gas stations along the way. So it has to be a gas station along the river. Okay. That means that we have to go to the back way, go 34, come up to Kearney, come up the back way that, we, that they would have gone and come Interstate 80 because there's only those bodies of water that are open are, are on the Platte River. Right. Because everything else is frozen, he says. Does, it doesn't mean that they didn't go through ice somewhere. No, it doesn't and then, mean that. And then it then froze over again. Yep. But a lot of but times that ice it. is going to be twisted up at that moment in time, and they're looking for... They're looking for it. They actually have guys actually looking for it. And, and there are people out there that would see a vehicle if they are ice fishing on that pond, which is an ice fishing pond. Right. 
and that's new information that really does help us out in, in our thinking differently at this moment in time for what we're looking for and how we're looking for it. And so now we have this Phillips 66. The gas station is closed at 11 o'clock. You have a parking lot. It's, it's also closed at 1.40 in the morning and a parking lot that goes right into it. Yeah, you have a parking lot right next to it. Is it a potential? It's flowing pretty good. Yeah. So no, no, no right here. But yes, up here on the corner. Yeah, possibly there. Do we have any debris? I don't know. Is it thick? I mean, is it um, deep or is it not deep? But let's just look at the bank and see if there's anything coming off the bank here. But you're, but you're now again off pavement as well. Yeah, but they might be turning around, rotating through. Yeah. Like you said, she was always making wide turns also. Yeah. She was having a tough time. She had a tough time with turning. Right. Yeah, we got a tree sticking out here, so. I think we really need, like Bill said, we really need to focus on the river. So in speaking with the uh, Gabe Warden there, you know, he was mentioning that he'd been writing ice fishing tickets since January 3rd. So then we have to come back and start looking at this a little bit different is, you know, how much of the water in the area was frozen versus not frozen. And so, you know, is he having the same recollection as memory as your family is, as you guys were driving around for the next week, how much of the water was frozen the night of? See, I don't think it was as frozen as- I don't think it was It either. wasn't. I think it was because I remember going out and, not, and seeing yeah. bodies of water. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got and it was like just that Zoka. big snowstorm is what solidified everything. So like, then that was a week just, later when yeah. the snowstorm hit, when yeah, things started freezing yeah. over. It was pretty nice before that. We were working. We were putting siding on a house. We were tearing down that tree in my backyard. Yeah. And it wasn't that cold. No. Okay. Mm -mm. I'm thinking we're in the 50s and 60s. Okay. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, if we went off of what he said and you guys were able to confirm that, then now we're looking at only open bodies of water like we have now. And does that now take us from 34 west even further to where it runs into 80? Now she realizes where she's at and she starts working her way back and we work and we need to look at every potential gas station, parking lot, river body of water along the way. Or do we continue with our theory right now of let's stay on 34 that she recognized uh, Janita made her way back on 12th, made her way north, and now she's staying and she knows where she needs to go. Now what bodies of water do we have off of 32 on the way back to Aurora that we need to just put eyes on and then game plan it from there. So that's that's kind of where I'm at right now then, knowing that the body, the water was still open then. And, and like, I don't know if he told you or not, but his son died January 3rd. Okay. So he, his mind had to be preoccupied with that. Right. I mean, that was what, uh, 10, 11 days right in that area, you know? I mean, I don't know if he's... And he was out to work, huh? Yeah. Huh. Well, he said he took some time off January 3rd to, uh, you know, a week or so, and then he came back. Okay. And so that would have been right before, but I'm just not knowing about the ice fishing thing. I mean, you might have had a few guys out there that are dedicated, but man, I don't think it was froze that solid. Okay. All right, then let's stay on 34 and keep working that. Um, so that way we're just putting our own eyes on the entire route. If, you know, your mom is now conscientious of where she's at and now she's, you know, beelining at home and she's making progress, that let's look at those accident locations. Okay. Um, because I'm not from the area, I've not seen it yet, so let me get my full bearings of this route here, and then we'll start breaking it out from home and 34 and Grand Isle. I think it's our next direction we need to go with it. Okay. So, yeah, we uh, we keep pivoting, you know, throughout the days, we keep learning new information, and yeah. this is how we keep breaking it down, and we just keep checking these places off, and... Until we find that path. Yep. So yeah, we'll keep looking for those uh, tire marks and we'll keep looking for the, the potential for what we know, for what we've seen in the past as well. Yeah. So this one, 
kind of made sense. I didn't like that it was a left-hand turn. If she's you know now heading north, yeah. she makes a left, but a gas station continues to make sense for them. Yeah. They keep stopping at gas stations. So this closed at 11 p.m. So it's closed at 2, 2, uh, 2 a.m. when they make their way through. And did she come in? Did she turn around right here? But there's nothing off the bank here that indicates and it. I know that the state patrol, sheriff's office, police department, on like the 13th or 14th, they hit this road from here all the way to Grand Island checking every business, every camera through this town. Actually, I had people tell me they'd never seen that many police in Grand Island. That's before. good, okay. So they were on this main road right here, 281, because the VA, the hospital, St. Francis, is just five, six blocks off 281 up here. So they assumed they might have came down, and that was the direction they saw it. What's that? Zanon. Zanon Air Place. They had drilled by there after St. Francis, which is on the way to 281. Right. Which they might have taken 281, and I just don't know. And the thing is, they could have taken 281, and up here, that town Giltner, at that pump and pantry, they could have turned left there, and that would have got them into Giltner. And that that was when the 10 o'clock sighting yes. was, yep. and the flagpole. Yeah, okay. yep. And then they went to Highway 14, which would be straight out of Aurora. Literally, when they hit 14, they were three miles from I-80. If they would have looked that direction, they would have seen the lights from the truck stop, but they turned right and went that way and right. then hit six and turned right and went into Hastings. Right. And then proceeded that way. Okay. All right, yeah, so let's finish uh, the route back to Aurora. That way we're putting eyes on all of that. And then I think that tomorrow our focus is going to be coming back down to Hastings, 34 and 6, heading west and taking that all the way to 80 on that road. Because what Bill and I were talking about in our mind is, you know, yeah, does she now realize that she just left what she thinks is Grand Isle in her mind is actually Hastings and that she's now sees 36 and 6 and in her mind she's heading west to or east to home. And she knows that she's got to drive what 15 20 minutes yeah and so but instead she's heading further west 15 20 minutes but in her mind she's on the right road now finally yeah. so yeah. but we're playing with this theory also is that she saw the Juanita or Janita sign and then she looped back around found 34 here and then she came back north so we have so we just, many we just got to keep taking the grid that square grid all the way across to 80 and make sure we clear that especially if the river is the only thing that was not frozen uh, but we were talking to the family. The family says it was not frozen at that time. I don't no. think anything was, they, they were frozen back then. I really don't. So we have no, to. That, no, and yeah. that's partially why we were so worried was because the that, weather turned. Yeah, when we had like, that big storm coming, everyone after. was like, we need to search. We had drone teams out. You know what? Wasn't call, that on? Call, uh. Sean Van Warmer? Yes, Sean Van Warmer and ask him what they were on their, on their cameras, what they saw if the water was frozen or not. The water sources weren't uh, frozen over yet then, right? They were all still very clear and... Breaks in it. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Can you repeat that for me? Okay, the water sources were frozen. The only one that would not have been frozen completely solid would have been the river. And they did fly over all of the water sources from Grand Island to Aurora that they could find anyway. Do you know how froze they were? Yeah, I don't honestly remember, Vic. I mean, hell, I don't remember my name half the time. But <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> but I was thinking that um, I was they thinking were, they, they couldn't be solid. bad. No, they were pretty solid because there was people ice fishing out at Mormon Island. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Any any new leads or anything? Or oh, we're just still searching. Son of a. <laughs> well, but but this, but wow. this actually is a good lead because it now helps us narrow down. You know, as you guys were out searching, you know, knowing that everything's frozen solid, you know, somebody right. would have noticed that the ice was broken through. So yeah. now this now this brings us into seeing the the last sighting there at the roundabout. And what if she thought that she was heading east on 34 and she ends up down there at the truck stops in 80 
and the river. So now the I think that the river is now our our big main focus in any potential parking lots or anything. Well, off the only of, thing if they if they were over on Highway Six, if they were on Highway Six slash Thirty Four whatever, and they were heading west or whichever. I, I know there are some ponds along that Highway 6, I, and there, there are a couple um, pretty nasty curve areas there. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if anybody has ever went that way, but that would be an opportunity to head west from Adams Central. Yeah, yeah, especially if, you know, at the roundabout, you know, she sees the 6 and 34 signs, and she believes that she just left you know, what she believes is Grand Isle behind her, which is actually Hastings, and so she thinks she's heading east when she's really heading west, and she's 15, 20 minutes from home, and she just beelines at that direction. So, right, but do we do we have a video saying which direction they did go on at that roundabout? Yeah, they were uh, heading west still on uh, yep. 6. They were still heading west on Highway 6? Yep. Yeah. These guys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we'll, I mean, we'll, there's, we'll focus there, on the there's river. a couple areas in there, and I'm telling you, if they get past Minden, it's yeah. guys, it is up and down and round and round, and it's not it's not a good road. That's where we should go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate you got no it. Problem. Let me know if I can help you. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Okay, and I'm thinking okay, his so. calculation would be right with the rivers because they were playing <laughs> drones and they covered... Uh, I, I've got the weather here. It's uh, minus one up to 22 degrees on the 4th. On the, yeah, so it was it, pretty cold. It was, then went to 15, 16, 18, 23. So you were frozen all the way to the 12th, 10th, 11th, 12th. So yeah. that was your so, cold weather. Yeah, so, so now we're back to the river only, yeah. which, which is good. Yep. It helps We've narrow. A lot of places where we T-bone at the river, at the flat, mm -hmm. roads do. Okay. Where they, uh, I mean, they are a lot of access where you can go around curbs by them to where you could wind up in the river too, in the flat. Okay. There's a lot of places. Okay. I'm going to say then let's uh, let's do this then, um, just so we can catch up on our sleep and get a good meal, and we're closer to your home right now. Um, so let's break for the afternoon. We will br map it out tonight on that six and every potential location that was going to make sense all the way over to 80 from there. And I think that's what we really need to focus in on tomorrow then is open bodies of water, which is the river only, yeah. that we're not looking at these ponds anymore. We're not looking at lakes. Okay. We can see the ones that are on the curves and deep curves where they could have may have gone in that kind of a disappearing yeah. but I think you're really focused on the river you know it just yeah. it, it, the, the 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 ice issue is the biggest one and it was deep it had to be deep if it was minus one for five yeah. days in a row yeah yeah for sure okay does that work for you guys sounds good all right yeah so let us know where you're planning on starting tomorrow and we'll see if we can't meet you there okay yeah I'll be uh it will be west of the school somewhere on six in that direction so yeah we'll let you know later okay. tonight or by eight o'clock in the morning okay sounds good and then we'll start at uh, nine o'clock tomorrow sounds okay. good all sounds right good. sounds good thank you all thank right. you yep. just have a good night and get some rest all right we'll do did you just get the break we needed i don't know she's saying that the 34 there's a pond on the side of the road with a six foot gap in the reeds we're only 18 miles from there it's almost like i can't get there fast enough right now just that feeling that you have. You have a disturbance right there that there's no reason ice would be broken like that at all. I think I have something. 